in the big bill stack. We'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack, we'll fix your techie woes. Then we'll break things up, we'll bake these till we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to episode 039 of the Bilge Tank. Hi. Hello. This Hi. week it's all about clusters and, um, well, Raspberry Pi clusters specifically. Clusters, brambles, um, supercomputers. Yeah, <coughs> we actually have a cluster of clusters on our desk. We right do. Now. If we cluster this cluster, we could cluster while we cluster. Yes, it's a cluster flock. <laughs> it is, totally. <laughs> and we yeah. have uh, a special guest, <laughs> Alex cool. Ellis, today, who is a Docker captain. Ahoy. Ahoy. Uh, and also has his own Pi Zero cluster. Um, which is very cool. So, what just happened? <laughs> That's just me playing with the browser. Okay. I was thinking um, at some point we should check the chat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, good point. Definitely. Uh -huh. um, Hello, Alex in chat. tweeted us early last week asking for some sort of indicator solution for the Pi Zero. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I was asking about uh, an LED board that I could connect to the top of a Raspberry Pi. Um, like here. <coughs> Do you want to bring up the um, close-up camera? So. Yeah, because I think you were thinking about things like Unicorn Hat and Pi Glow, but they yes. were just too bulky, right? Yeah, so we just said scroll fat because you love scroll fat, and you said, yeah, yeah. scroll fat. Have you got anything a bit cheaper? <laughs> smaller. <laughs> smaller. <laughs> smaller. Because, um, as you can see from this cluster, what I've done is I've used some copper standoffs to separate these pies, so it's very easy construction. It's a bit like Meccano. Um, the ones I started with were half the size, mm -hmm. and that was the scale I wanted, and it was about this tall. Very, very cute. And so I thought, can we make it a bit bigger um, and get some LED boards in here? We looked at the Pi Zero um, scroll fat header, and it's very, it's very large. It's about that big and probably about ten pounds. So this would have mm -hmm. quickly got out of hand. But you had these, luckily, for three pounds. I bought all of them, um, <laughs> and this actually started off with three. And John, you said to me, it's not big enough. So yeah. you're big or go it home. Had to, I said. It had to grow. <laughs> <in there. laughs> um, but no, it's very cool. This is this is the smallest of the. We, well, based on that conversation, we decided to do an episode about clusters because the cluster hat had been talked about recently, uh, and there was some other stuff that was going on that was interesting. And somehow, in the space of a week, we now have five different Raspberry Pi clusters <laughs> on this desk. Yeah, yeah everyone. Different people. Everyone yeah. was really helpful. Very it was like, hey, you've got a cluster project. Could could you kind of send us one? And everyone responded really well. Yeah, including so, Nick, who kind of drove his over here this morning. Oh, that's um, cool. It's the one that looks like ORAC. Um, <coughs> it was on Hackaday yesterday. This one here on Hackaday yesterday, and yeah. Nick drove it here this morning for yeah. us to have a look at. Yeah. But we we posted, we tweeted about it weeks ago because yeah. obviously we're so far ahead of the curve. Yeah. And we got some stuff from Bitscope. They shipped this from Australia. Yeah. Um, so we'll wow. show you some of these later. They've got some really nice uh, stuff there as well. Yeah. And we've got one of the cluster hats, which we'll be stocking oh, soon I like in the shop, hat a lot, which is yeah. Mm. Why don't you shut that down and show it starting up the Pi Zero as one at a time? Because that's does a really, do really nice touch. No? Oh, does it, it kind of open it up can power can control the power to them. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Really sweet. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Really impressive, that hat. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good one. Definitely. Apart from they're going to need really narrow um, hats or add-on boards to add them onto them. Because mm. there's mm. no room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we'll have a look at all of these um, in a little bit. But since we have someone who actually built a cluster hat here, uh, a cluster Pi cluster. Um, and tell us about more about Docker. Because it. it was like Docker as well. It's like Docker, we've heard a lot about that. Yes, yeah. we'd like to know more. Mm. Um, well, tell us first, what's a Docker captain? Um, so, Docker, Docker captain is someone who has been recognised for contributing to the, the community through tutorials, um, social engagements, and other things like that. And what Docker have done is and it's the first time I've really had that kind of experience with a with a software vendor is they they reach out to you and they ask you questions they appreciate what what contribution you're making and want mm -hmm. to show people around the world that you're actually um, legit and that they you know they're interested in what you're doing so, so you can you almost become <coughs> kind of a, a recognized ambassador I guess for the the product yeah or brand. yeah that's the idea yeah. and um, I think the most synonymous thing I can think of is a Microsoft MVP, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and what was the thing that you did that got you recognised and kind of included in that group? Yeah, so I, I first started using Docker probably in October last year, and I realised just how um, cool it was, how much of buzz was around it, 
and I, I started to learn it and think is there any way I can start using this at work um, which is primarily in Microsoft House mm -hmm. ADP in Peterborough um, and I started off by trying to test our UI for our payroll application and what I used was Docker to drive our tests and then instead of, ha instead of having to start up or maintain a big array of computers to click websites mm -hmm. we use Docker to bring up containers test our website and um, and then strip them down again right okay and um, you wanna, well tell us a bit more about so, what docker is what, what's yeah, it there so, to achieve so i mean f from the docker is a way of um it's what well, is two things there's docker inc which is uh, a company mm -hmm. which is the main sponsor of the docker project the docker project actually came about um from solomon hikes in france from a company called doc cloud mm -hmm. he re open sourced the software it's now got a huge um, following behind it, as you know, um, some very big names. And the software itself allows you to run a container. And containers are often compared to virtual machines. Virtual machine is very heavyweight, it's a big thing, it gives you some really cool features like isolation, security. Mm -hmm. But you'd but have to say allocate a dedicated disk for yeah. it and allocate a portion of memory I mean, to it. And think that kind think of thing. how long it might take to start up an entire VM. Mm -hmm. The ones we use at work take several minutes, but a Docker container can start in seconds. Good, it it runs out. within the sh within the platform it's hosted on, yeah. rather than emulating yeah. a new machine. So or if, if you virtualizing. think if you think about it, um, it's just a process, and it started off on a Linux computer. Mm -hmm. There's a Windows version coming out in 2016, but it started as a normal process with extra isolation around it. Mm -hmm. um, you have essentially a GH root, and you can start and stop whatever you want in there. Configure a whole system. Um, strip it down and once you've got it to, to state where you like it you can publish that to the internet and anyone else can bring that down again. And all the kind of shared libraries and everything would travel with that container essentially? That's the, that's the thing that I like so much about this is that I've worked with Phil on the scroll fat library for Python mm -hmm. and I built out a container that had all of the scroll fat code all the Python libraries, any native extensions all put and packaged together all someone has to do is go to the docker hub pull the image down and they can run it on their Pi. Okay. Um, and that's kind of how I've made this cluster work is um, what we have here is four um, Raspberry Pis with lights on. Mm -hmm. There's a Python program that drives that and they, um, I think we've got a diagram of that as well, they basically receive a HTTP request. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get that request they light up, they do the work and when it's shut down again they turn the lights off. Mm -hmm. So um, the bottom pie is responsible for orchestrating all of that, mm -hmm. and it's it's the same software. So if I was just to hit that in a web browser now, you'll see. Um, go to close up, Paul. Close up. Yeah, we there we go. Uh, yeah. If we can get in there, you're going <coughs> to see these light up, and it will it will basically do kind of a fair run policy. So each one will get one at a time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to introduce some extra load on there, let's say with a tool like uh, Apache Bench. I'm just going to go in here and I'll say one request, concurrent request, 100 um, simulations of that. So essentially this is just going to fire 100 requests, one after the other. So one will complete, the next one will run, yeah. and it'll do it 100 yeah. times. Yeah. One at a time. And what you'll see is it's almost a strict pattern going up <coughs> because they're named and they're recorded. And as you increase that number of concurrency, it's like having, um, if you imagine on the bilge tank had three people at the moment, mm -hmm. all making 100 requests, it looks a bit more like that. And okay. then if you were to take six people and get them to all make 100 requests, the lights are almost constantly on. And that that's really just showing you how much quickly, how much more quick it can um, process the work. For certain types of workload, this is a very scalable solution, right? I mean, it, yeah. as long as it's kind of batch processing, like serving a single web request or something, um, the more <coughs> devices you add, essentially, it scales with the number the of devices. The more scale that you, yeah, that you can cope with. Um, now, Docker has some really neat features in, in the Swarm software that lets you hot add and remove. Step back, Swarm? Yeah. <laughs> what? So, swarm? So this, this is a cluster. <coughs> okay. Uh, but so are like they all one, members of the cluster? Is one like a master? Yeah. So the, the bottom one is actually the manager okay. of the cluster. And in the Docker world, we call it Swarm. And this is a Swarm manager, mm -hmm. the bottom node. Each other one of these is an agent. 
And if I was to query the Swarm right now, because we've got one, two, three, four boards, mm -hmm. it would tell me that we've got two gigabytes of memory available right. for CPUs. Um, earlier in the year for Linux User and Developer Magazine, I did an article with seven Pi 2s, mm -hmm. and so I had around 28 CPUs available. You imagine that if you ran one process on each core, how much more you could scale out an application like this. Yeah, so long as they're not sharing a data set, so basically so long as those requests are independent, yeah. it's a very effective way of doing it. And even if they're not, there's ways to but share as as your yeah. data yeah. stores or whatever. Yeah, so what, what I was trying to say was with Swarm, <coughs> a Docker solution is you get a bunch of stuff for free that you, you don't necessarily get through um, normal load balancing. Mm -hmm. So you can add extra nodes in, you can scale out your application with Docker Compose. and they take a lot of the, the hassle out of it, is what I found. So what's the, the configuration. actual web server that's serving the requests? This, uh, the base pie is, um, we can maybe show you the diagram if you, if you yeah, like. Open that. Is an Nginx load balancer, which is a very sort of standard piece of yeah. software. Um, that gets, that queries the Swarm API. So mm -hmm. it's got a JSON response. It comes back and it says, okay, I've got four containers with this label IoT node. I'll put them in my upstream server list. And then as a request comes in, it will look at that list and pick one and it'll use a round robin policy and it sends a request off around them. So is this actually a module for Nginx? It's this not a module. I, I did look at modules and a couple of options were there, either a native extension or a Lua extension mm -hmm. and what I've done is I just generate a static configuration file based upon the API. Right, okay. So, so it almost, it, it, it essentially the um, part that you did essentially creates a configuration for Nginx yeah. by querying the Docker Swarm, swarm. to see what's available. And if I if I was to start two pies and mm -hmm. query the Swarm, <coughs> it'll come back with two nodes. What if one goes down? At the moment if one goes down, Nginx is smart enough to stop using it. Because it's configured as a load balancer and it sees that it is, the, it's a the smart, node is it's a smart, sof it's yeah, smart okay. software. It's really good, um, which is one of the reasons that I used it for this project. It's also pre-built. So strictly speaking, the cluster functionality doesn't really require Docker, but you're using Docker because it makes the uh, configuration setup simpler, it the environment it makes easier. It, so the the main thing that I like about Docker is the fact that you can create an image, test mm -hmm. it, and then publish it across many, you know, as many computers Which as you want. Which, exactly if you're doing a cluster, is ideal, right? Yeah. Because you want to replicate that setup. I, I mean, I was talking to Phil a few days before this about the cluster hat, mm -hmm. and we were looking at propagating the settings between each node, mm -hmm. and we were, having to, we were having to run this command and get it to run it on each one, whereas with Docker, you do everything in your container, deploy your container, it'll be exactly as it was mm -hmm. when you had it. You can have different versions of them. Mm -hmm. Actually, Inside the Pi, I'm running um, Python and the Flask framework, and you can have a look at the source code. It's all available on the blog post. Um, and that just opens up the RPI, GPIO code, and it will set the pin on and off for this board. Okay, um, gotcha. If we scroll right down to the end, there's a GitHub link. You could probably there's just call There's that. a link to this blog post in our mm. um, comments for the video. There's my scroll fat example and in, in that one what we were doing was querying the swarm and just outputting the number right okay oh then, three yeah yeah obviously. okay cool yeah Very a lot nice. of people are asking well what are the practical applications and i think uh, raspberry pi blogged a few months ago around the pi 3 launch that mm. they were moving their web serving front end over <laughs> to pies and i think uh I think they're now actually serving most of their front-end web requests from Raspberry Pis. They are, and uh, this comes up a lot. Whenever you bring up clusters in Raspberry Pi, a lot of people come out of the woodworks and say, oh, why bother? Yeah. Yeah. And Intel i7 is as fast as 16 Pi 2s or whatever. Yep. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's, um, it's a great learning tool if you want yeah. to learn about distributed computing. Well, um, it's kind of just fun. They replaced the a load of Mac Minis with just Raspberry Pis doing the web serving. Yeah. I don't know. Is it more efficient per watt? Probably not, but it's still cool. Um, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Because the computation-wise, they're not that much worse than GPUs per watt. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. Factor of two. I suspect. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to say that I suspect Raspberry Pi has a vested interest in running their hosting off Pi's because it, it, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a good story, yeah. right? But yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the I most mean, efficient way, but it's a viable oh, no. way. For sure. But replacing Mac Minis, Mac Minis are dead expensive, mm. and yeah, yeah. Mythic Beast was just looking for a platform that is common, won't change that mm. much, <laughs> and they could just stick them in there. I think there are legitimate commercial uses for it, though, which is why some of these clusters that we've got here today are here. Super industrial. 
yeah, it's, uh, yeah like it's, it's not about the stuff. performance is it it's not all about the performance i think um some of the earliest clusters i saw were last year in in magpie and they weren't doing it because it was faster th or cheaper than a main computer it was because we want to learn about distributed computing yeah exactly i mean if you if you look at this pi zero cluster i have a, a pi 2 cluster as well with seven nodes mm -hmm. 28 cpus that's far more efficient, but this is this is so cheap, it's so nimble, we can mm -hmm. test things out and we can still see the differences of scaling the application and for educational purposes, I think it's really great because if, even um, at home, if you're able to source as many Pi Zeros, you could build this. Yeah, absolutely. And you, can run, you can run applications that you might be simulating at work. Um, think about how companies like Netflix scale up their applications, it would definitely be across multiple hosts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's what they call horizontal scaling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. More and more hardware as opposed to vertical scaling, yeah. which is faster. Well, the first oh, thing we're going to do with the cluster over there is put cameras on it, put it on our seeds, and have just like a totalitarian <laughs> seed state. Yeah, four HD cameras doing it's, image processing. It's like I board. said, it's going to be the worst bullet time ever. Yeah. It's like four shots mm. of a plant. Yeah. And you like spin them around and nothing changes. <laughs> nothing changes <laughs> at all. Cool if you could do a camera on each side of the plant and actually get a full. 3D surround picture of it. That would be cool. Is that um, what Google do to make the 3D vegetation and building images when they take aerial photography? Oh yeah, which are pretty odd, but kind of cool. <laughs> they kind yeah, of they work, work. Yeah. they do work. Mm. Um, did you say you demoed this at <coughs> some, some event? Um, so my my cluster, I, I've, I built the larger cluster mm. and I was simulating hit counters with a database and it, it was great, it was interesting, but I wanted something that was really visual as well that could show off just how, how cool this was. I know we've got a lot of clusters here today, mm -hmm. but in terms of really visualizing what's going on, that, that's what I wanted to get um, get with this. So Docker are running an event called DockerCon in mm -hmm. Seattle in June next month, and they've got a competition where you can produce a cool Docker hack using Docker. So we've got Docker, Swarm, and IoT here, mm -hmm. and that's been entered as part of the competition. Cool. It, the winner gets to show it off on stage, so um, if the judging panel is listening, I hope you really like this. <laughs> <laughs> we endorse um, this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> it's very cool. Oh, we like it. I think yeah. we should have a quick look at some of the other clusters we've got mm. here, because people are so yeah. kind to send them in. Um, do you want to Let's start with Cluster Hat. I think a lot of people have heard of this. It was Pi blocked? Uh, when, yes, when it, it was, was, yeah. It's warm. So we, we got <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly. Oh, oh, I can't find the camera. There we go. Yeah, so Cluster Hat is uh, by Chris, who goes by, it's on the board, 8086.net, and there's a link underneath the YouTube video, and he, he was one of the first people to just say, you know, I'm going to make myself a hat, put some USB things on it, connect it all up to a USB hub, and have the Pi 3 as a host, and he did it, executed it, and he's now selling them on eBay, and we're going to get some in. Because somehow people have managed to get more than one Pi Zero. Those scoundrels. <laughs> scoundrels. Those scoundrels. Yes, this was almost an anti-marketing exercise, wasn't it? It was, what, what accessory can I make for something that nobody has? <laughs> but as the availability has got better, um, it should be a lot easier the, to populate yeah, the cluster. It's really cool, though. It's really well set up, and you get software images for each of the individual Pi Zeros, which are based on uh, Jesse Light, and mm -hmm. the software images for Host, which is based on Jesse Light. And they set up in such a way that the... Um, the networking on the Pi Zeros is bridged via the host Pi to the host Pi's Ethernet, so it's all self-contained. You don't need. How to does have that even work then? What spaghetti is it? method, four-port so USB Ethernet bridge, or it's what? It's going to be OT, OTG type. Oh, of course, so, yeah. you can do that with the zero. They're all connected yeah. to the yeah. host Pi via USB, and then mm -hmm. over USB networking, it's bridged then to the external network of the yeah. Pi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was land scanning for Pi's earlier, and they all showed up. Really nice and <laughs> the, I mean, the, cool. the bandwidth is going to be restricted on this, but for the applications cool. like we're talking about yeah, here, we, we don't need that huge amount of bandwidth. We just want no, to no. test things. Can you, can you just focus in on those resistors? Uh, what, what Phil's horrible hack. <laughs> That's an aftermarket modification. Yes. So one of the things I thought of doing with a, a toy cluster, which is effectively what this was, was um, experimenting with designing my own bus protocol. So I just stuck some single core wire through the GPIO hole, soldered it to each individual pie and pulled it up to 3v3 at the end. So that basically gives me three wires of bus which I can control from any one of those pies <laughs> and effectively try and talk between them. I'm reminded of how we endorsed Alex, <laughs> but, we, but we, we can't possibly endorse Phil. <laughs> <laughs> You're a maniac. No way, no way. <laughs> 
No, no you can cool. gradually expand that up to get a more parallel bus, or you can yeah. you can experiment with doing serial mm. bus stuff over it. It's, it's quite a, a neat little thing. And because I've got each Pi Zero set up to connect to a, a network share that exists on the host Pi, I can write a Python script yeah. that will then detect the host name of each Pi and do something based on which Pi it's running on. And then I can okay. just say, run this Python script on all the mm. Pi's. Mm. It'd be interesting to see how you could do peer-to-peer -peer well, networking with something like this. It'll be quite, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to try and figure out how that works and get your head around Protocol the problems three wires. and challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of discussion on one of the threads on Raspberry Pi about getting lots of zeros hooked up and about doing kind of Mac-to-Mac -Mac networking and things like that to eliminate the PHY, mm -hmm. which I don't understand, but it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but apparently there are some chips that will do switching like that. Um, at a lower layer so you don't have the complexity oh. and you get rid of some USB hub issues. The idea that being that you can eventually have 127 of these. Wow. Well, slightly less wow. including the hubs. But. And you were saying, Phil, that um, basically each of these has a controllable oh, power yeah, supply so it can bring them up and down. A power switch needed. and you type something like uh, auto... Uh, what's that? It's, Go cluster, zero, go. Cluster hat <laughs> on P1, P2, P3, P4, and right. the script will run and it will turn on the power of each Pi Zero in Does sequence. Does it do a safe shutdown? Really if you turn them off? It doesn't from that end, it will oh, just okay. turn them off straight away. Or Not that I've looked in, but it doesn't do a safe shutdown. It will just cut the power dead. I wonder if you could run this from a battery. But it, it wouldn't be impossible to basically Probably. adjust the script so it SSHs mm -hmm. in and turns them off and then waits mm. for enough time for them to shut down before cutting the power, which would yeah. be quite nice. So it's nice work there. It's nice to have something like this in our cool. hands. Yeah. And just looking at the... Um, they've got a nice... Uh, Male micro B connector yeah, solution, really SMB nice mounted, thing. which we use for test jigs. It's we have something hole. similar. Yeah. Is it through hole? Yeah, it is. Oh, wowzers. We've actually got the part number for that now. Oh, very, nice. very subtly through hole. Well, that's it's good for very strength. strong, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just looking at Alex's nice. cluster here and thinking about a little backplane PCB it would be quite easy to yeah. do. Yes. Not with any of the clever business, yeah. particularly, but just something to tidy up the cabling. Yes. Um, would yeah. be very nice. Fantastic. That's a cool Chris product. spent a lot of time hunting down those connectors. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Farnell started stocking them and he was like, ah, why are you to <laughs> shake tiny cluster fist? Okay, I think we're going to have to go to big camera for the remainders because these these are the big boys. Yep. Um, do you want to talk yeah. about Nick's first? Uh, we might. It's going to be hard to get it on camera, isn't it? The power is yeah, well, if, we, if we look at the bit scopes and then move them out of the way a bit, yeah, it's okay. actually we can, yeah. we can bring the, um, the small camera over here, which is probably easier than trying to do anything oh, else. Live handheld. Live handheld shake camera. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyway, bit scope. Giant. We love scope. them for their oscilloscopes. Oh, and they, they had a lot of uh, call for kind of industrial uses of their oscilloscopes, so having lots of them mounted in a kind of instrumentation frame, and then they got into this whole industrial supply thing. Well, a lot of test equipment is rack mount, or can be rack mounted anyway, yeah. so it's kind of a standard format for the industry, isn't it? But then they kind of, uh, for the Pi 3 launch, they had these on display, which is things like a 1U enclosure with four Pi 3s in it. And a network switch. And a network yeah. switch, and they've got a nice power supply in there, which runs on 12 volts. Mm -hmm. Actually runs on a voltage range, I think. It's yeah. got quite a decent converter nice. in there. Just so you can chuck any old power in, and, and the, it'll look the after the nice. Back power through the GPIO as well. That's so. really, really tidy. Really yeah, tidy. It's really tidy. You don't really notice because these cables, um, these are just the Ethernet cables. The actual Pi's plug onto the, the back plane, on. which is really, really Amazing. cute. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they, I mean, they've gone all out on these kind of uh, multi Pi cluster setups, haven't they? They sense yeah. so much different Well, this stuff. makes a lot of sense because yeah. you're not necessarily clustering them together for the CPU power, you're clustering them together for the I.O. and for the functionality, yeah. run mm. a bunch of sensor equipment that you may have connected to kind of your hydroelectric dam or your wind power plant or something to that effect. That one will do... These Let's are look at this in close up because this is uh, one of their blades. So this <laughs> can't um, get, can never work out with this <laughs> flaming camera. Is <laughs> so glad I'm not the only one. Over to you, Alex. At least we have one professional in the building. <laughs> but, so this is a nice blade job. job. <laughs> this, takes, this takes two pies and powers them. Now, if you look at those four brass squares, two on the left, two on the right, the big brass squares, they're quite important when you come to the next one we're going to show. Because they all plug in to the enclosure. There is actually a barrel jack connector as well, just for people who don't want scary giant metal plates at either end. Second so under there. But there's essentially the planes, and um, when you plug it in, one of those planes is positive, the other is negative. Can I hit the... Is it that one? Yeah. yeah. Just hit. Oh, there we go. Look at so that. So the power actually just goes down the outside. <laughs> Ridiculous. Wow. That's just so you can have one power stuff. connection. So much pie. <laughs> <laughs> much scare. <laughs> And these are all Pi 3s? Uh, two of those are Pi 2s if you're looking really carefully. Yeah. 
But we'll replace it with Pi 3s and set it up to do a continuous integration or something. And obviously with setups like this, quite dense arrays um, of, of Pis, they've had to look at the thermals quite carefully to yeah. make sure that they all run nicely. So I haven't actually got it here, but they also sent us some 20 millimeter square heat sinks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely <laughs> huge honking heat sinks in Pi land. Mm. Um, so we're going to stick those on, but they straight to the onto the pie, straight onto the, the pie die CPU, of the chip, yeah. yeah. And you mount that vertically. Convection takes care of the cooling, and apparently they're getting nowhere near the governor limit with some pretty hard driving. So what's that designed to mount into? Because it's not a, a rack width, but it's uh, it is a rack width. Uh, probably one of the URLs shows it off. Oh um, yeah, we've got a page up. Thing. Yeah, I see, there's a page there. Where was um, it? Let's see if we show <laughs> it off. But this goes into that's a ten-way unit. They have rack mounts that take those, and I think they're 4U and 8U racks. Right. That make it into kind of 20 units and 40 units, and just an okay. immense number of. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You can see the uh, power yeah, supplies on either side. I'll say, there you go. There you that go. That looks scary. We see a 12 volt lead acid battery or something. <laughs> going, isn't it? That's it. scary. But this, I mean, this but is if like. If you go further down, look. Whoa, okay. Look at it. That's the 21, so that's two of those to make 20 pies in there. Is that the BNC connectors along the bottom? I'm seeing, or is that it will be the um, instrumentation connectors, yeah, won't it? It'll be, be the, these, the probes and yeah. everything. So this is basically a, a, an industrial measuring and monitoring system. But yeah, yeah, Bruce came over to see us when he was over for the Pi 3 launch, and they've got some really cool stuff coming. They do. They're, they're definitely doing very well by superior engineering. This stuff just looks great as well. Yeah. It's, it's like real toys, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Well, apparently they've bumped into a lot of people who want to use this. So mm. there is the, they know the people who actually use the clusters as everyday working items. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really interesting. This kind of power supply has got to make it more reliable as well, hasn't it? And, yeah. you know, this is what we need to scale up. And I think once we can get to the point where we don't need an SD card to boot, mm. th these will potentially be able to take over in a load balance cluster and provide something like part of the Raspberry Pi's blog or do you know what I mean those sort of um, scaled out applications yeah it's a really interesting um, use case and it look it does look really nicely put together it's, it's dead cute the power supply looks pretty meaty uh, I just noticed yeah. a nice touch on the underside they've got little white silk screen patches for labeling your pies <laughs> so it just says ID next to it and you can write the uh, name of your pie in there yeah yeah they're really nice Fantastic. Great job, Bitscope. <coughs> yeah, oh, Lord, um, you spot the Pi 2s by the SD cards. If it pops yeah, out, it's a Pi 2. <laughs> Every time you pick it up, it goes, Sprink. Sprink. Yeah. And finally, we have Nick Smith's Aurac Light Cube, which Hackaday posted. Let's go freehand. Free Let's hand. go freehand. Free Roving Phil. <laughs> feel like I'm an on the ground reporter if I can even get the um, camera out of this clamp. Quick release. It does nothing. I don't think that's actually quick release. You need to loosen it and then press why, the switch. Why and, um, would it even be okay. there if it's not quick release? It's from Amazon and it costs Phil, about tough Phil. I, I, Don't, don't forget the fourth wall. wall. <laughs> so here we go, the very nice Oracle like cluster. I'm going to move this out of the way because otherwise Phil's going to have no chance. Oh, yeah. And the thing we liked about this, um, Nick lives around the Sheffield area. So he sent it as a few weeks back and we blogged about it because it was just really nice colour coordination. The USB cables at the back are also... Rainbow colours. Well, they match per pie, don't they? So it's yeah. purple, 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 red, red. Nice little touches. Are these HDMI extenders or something? Like, what, what, oh, they're networking. Ah. So in the bottom there, it's got a hub and it's got a power supply <laughs> for the whole thing. There is an HDMI port there, I think. Oh, there is on front. Yeah. 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 I, I love these port. panel mounted ports. I keep meaning mm. to get them in stock because they're just so great for projects where you want to yeah. pull that port Super out to a chassis useful. or something. It's kind of finding them online. They tend to be really expensive as well. Mm. You, you want to get a kit, to basically. It's like your Pi yeah. breakout kit that's got HDMI power and USB. And I think um, I was chatting to Nick earlier about this. It's uh, kind of the first hardware project he's done. Uh, yeah. He was saying about how interesting it's been kind of learning how to do laser cutting and um, he's a software guy traditionally yeah. so oh, I can do this yeah. well. but we were talking about really motivations well yeah, yeah I like the finish on that because Nick was all about he does software he wanted to do some hardware hmm. so we broke out the CAD for this and if you look at the link down below the video um, he's got a brilliant blog with the whole build process in there about how we use the kind of tiger claws here which were actually extended and more refined from Adafruit's original Pi case. Yeah, they're much longer, aren't they? They're dragon claws. Aren't they? <coughs> yeah, somebody actually put mathematics into it ah, to work no out way. why they should work and why they don't work. 
cool. So there's maths and everything, and it's really interesting. Um, Science. So Alex, for you, it was about building something that was actually affordable and demonstrated Docker, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I've I've been playing with Docker on the Raspberry Pi ever since I realised that Docker was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. It's not an officially supported platform for Docker. So there are yeah. times where you'll pull an image down and you'll say, okay, let's have a go with MongoDB or let's have a go with PHP and you'll find that the image won't work because all binaries have to be compiled for the architecture of the chip, right. which is ARM. So mm -hmm. with, um, with Swarm, with Node.js, with Python, what I've done is downloaded the source code, built the image and pushed it to the Docker Hub and then made use of that all along the way. So if you look, if anyone's interested and you want to try something, maybe the scroll fat, if you have one of those, there's a Docker image out there for that. And I've published it to the Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. You can pull that down. And, and this is si similar to pip in Python yeah. or apt almost for Debian. Yeah, say. so what I've done is I've used tools like pip and apt inside a container to create the ideal environment to run the scroll fat. And one of the things that surprised me with Docker containers is you'll find that there's only enough in there to make it work. You won't have text editors, you won't have man pages. And in some instances, the swarm itself is a three megabyte image, which has just got one static binary. Mm -hmm. And the guys are at Hypria, I think they're linked into YouTube, they've done a lot of work with this as well. And they were able to statically compile against, uh, I think, is it Py, Py GPIO? Right, yeah. Um, and just deploy a single static binary into a Docker container um, to do, well, whatever you can think of. Cool. Yep. Um, it's really, really cool. I I found it very useful. Um, and if you like geeking out, you know, go ahead, try one of the images, follow one of the tutorials. There's a Pi Zero tutorial out there on my blog as well. You find that through the video links. Ask me any questions. So I'd be really happy to answer them. Well, perhaps we could get you to put together a really getting started intro thing for our learning portal. Yeah, just for, yeah. This is how you set up Docker and why you might want to. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. Um, just before we move off clusters, we're going to give away a cluster hat with four Pi Zeros. Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the, so the show them close that. up again so people can actually see what they're getting. The glory of it. Yeah. You're getting what's in my hand apart from Phil's bodge job mm -hmm. and the extra cables. And the Pi 3, 2, So whatever. Alex has had to subscribe to the Magpie, buy a Magpie, buy yep. from us and buy from Pi Hut to get his four Pi Zeros. Yeah. Yep. And you get to jump <laughs> the queue and do it just by answering a That's question. It. This is easy mode. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is cluster easy mode. Yeah. Um, Instant so. cluster and then run Docker on it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and yeah, soon we'll have a guide that actually tells you how to do that. Mm. So, yeah, this is uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool prize actually. So, four pi zeros and a cluster hat. And the question is inspired by Nick's cluster because he has a pattern on the back, which yeah. is a secret message. Oh. So, there's a secret message on the side of the ORAC here. Don't give away any details. <laughs> no, no, no. Message. And we're now going to show you a web version. Are we showing it on Twitter? We got Sa we got Sandy to draw the puzzle out <laughs> because it's a bit hard to see on yeah, the clear it's very plastic. To see on but we're going to so, bring it up on screen. Was is it a tweet? <coughs> No, oh right, okay, if you want to win, you have to send us a tweet with the result of the code, so what the code says, yep. and the tweet has to have the hashtag bilgetank. Mm -hmm. And the first tweet we get with the hashtag bilgetank that only contains the answer is the winner. Yep. So That's the deal. Are you ready? Three, two, two one. one. Big reveal. Yeah. Take a screenshot now, because it's going in about five <laughs> seconds. And, and we're, we're not, going, it, we're not going to show it again as well. Yeah. It's a mystery though, isn't it? All those strange shapes, it's so geometric. What could they possibly mean? What mm. could they mean? Mm. Mm. My mm. lines are going squinting. They're strobing a bit, aren't they? Fibonacci. Grey and red. Oh. Yeah, they probably aren't on the internet. Okay, that's it. That's your lot, people. Oh. Ah, brilliant. Right, okay. so tinker away. Remember, posting in YouTube chat will not help you. No, we don't want to hear it. It's got to come via Twitter. Twitter, got hashtag, to have, hashtag tank, build tank. the answer, and that is it. And it's got to have the the answer, obviously. Mm. Did we have any other questions in the chat about the cluster at all? Uh, quite possibly. Oh, There's a bit of oh, chatter going on. They're mostly worried that Phil went overboard, but now he's back, so it's okay. <laughs> Stupid spring <laughs> mechanism. Any questions on Docker for anyone? No, 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 no Docker, no, none we can see, but... Uh, I think it takes time to process these things. Definitely. Plus, they're on a 16 second delay. Right. So there's like a latency the on the yeah, transmission, actually, which makes were, it a bit hard to. There were basic questions and people answered them. You answered oh, them with the diagrams people, right? and things, yeah. Awesome. Which is great. 
Uh, somebody mentioned a uh, lac rack. What's a lac rack? Uh, okay, the IKEA lac table. Ah. Five pounds from IKEA. Yeah. Um, the legs are the perfect width apart to fix one new 19 inch rack. Are you kidding? <laughs> no. Why don't we have some of those? We will do, yeah. Okay. We've got one we've turning got into one an rack. arcade. Hey, we could probably use one of those in the kitchen. I want that. Yeah. That's sort okay. of our networking mess. Um, <laughs> I think we shall move on from clusters and do a, just a quick whip round of a few other. Oh, do yeah. that. Oh, there's, one, there's one more thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, that. Yeah. This is the, the hat just blade. Yeah. Close up. So, Thank you, Alex. as well as the two pie blades, there's a blade here that has a pie yeah. and a hat next to it. So if you wanted to have lots of those in a thin rack mount format. You can also fit a 170 point breadboard into that little square as well. Oh yes, yeah. where it says hat. Yeah. Hat this is pie. kind of fun. Jump yeah. Over. And that looks like it fits straight into the same rack enclosure. So, yeah. fair play. So you might, have, yeah, you might have sensors or something on the hat or mm. some extra um, functionality or whatever. Yeah, a couple of FPGAs cool. or something. Who knows? Mm. Uh, Sandy has been super busy this week. He's actually <laughs> had a bit of time to play, so and he's put together a brilliant blog post about our hydroponic system from IKEA Into and what we've seeds. done Such to it. Really to good. there we go. Yeah, so that's yeah. on the blog. Go to blog.pimeroni.com. Um, it's it's a really great write up. It's got loads of information uh, about the kind of the wavelength of light that the hydroponic system uses, code, how the setup was done. There's a bit about flotilla in there because we're using flotilla sensors, um, so it's well worth a read. And the blog is something that we will have a lot more content coming onto over the oh yeah over the next few months, which is very exciting. Uh, we have a new product, which is the Pi Zero CCTV kit. That's up on the wall there, looking glorious. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, obviously designed for the Pi Zero. It takes the camera with the uh, camera adapter cable, and the whole thing kind of builds together into a plate you can mount on the wall. And I think you just bring the power supply, is that right, Paul? You get the uh, Wi-Fi with it. You just need a noobs card, a power supply. Noobs card and power supply. That's and a it. couple of bolts to mount it Oh, to and a you. camera. Oh, and a camera, Yeah, course. definitely yeah. need a camera. We didn't include the camera because you can choose a noir or you can choose a non-noir. Or an old version works still. Yeah, so old version. Those original around. Pi camera. Yeah, yeah all good. good. How much is it? Oh, the I don't know. kit is £24, pounds. the camera is 22 on our site. And if you've got the existing camera, you're good to go. Yeah, just yeah, £24. Yeah, pounds. Yeah, if you, most people have got a power supply that will actually suit the Zero really well. So we try to include the things that are kind of useful Yeah. Mm. Um, without being too include uh, having too much duplication in there really. Yeah. And it does say there's only eight in stock, but we're we're making some more at the moment. So yeah. Don't we're worry still, about that. We're still trying to work on the alternative plates as well. because <laughs> um, they actually needed some more laser finesse. And something else that Sandy's put together, um, which a lot of people I think will find useful, is a guide for assembling the Pibo Zero. Um, because we didn't have updated instructions when it went live. Mm -hmm. um, but it is slightly different to the old Pibo Zero, so it's it's well worth checking that you've got it put together correctly. And that's on our learning portal. Yep. Uh, went up this morning, so it's very straightforward. But fantastic! It's always good to have confirmation. Mm. Thank you, Sandy. Um, yeah, and we have uh, one, two other pieces of good news. Well, mm -hmm. well, one good piece of good <laughs> news is that the Lipo Zero, uh, Zero Lipo is is now finished. So we're just waiting for production PCBs. Um, but this is the final product uh, prototype, and yeah, it works really nicely. Yep. It's got a good, good shot of voltage. Um, we've been testing it with loads of lipos. It's rated for one and a half amps. Close up. Close up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it on a header here, but you can actually solder it directly to the GPIO of the Pi. Oh, why are we not focusing? Focus. 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 Camera. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's, it's designed to sit right low on the GPIO and be soldered directly on. Oh, yeah. yeah there's one another with a there. Pi Zero as a kind of live <laughs> camera <laughs> thing. <laughs> and then as you, as you said, you can add another hat or regular hat on the top of that, can't you? Yeah, you've still got the pins available to um, use the GPIO because it sits very low down yeah. and it's on a thin PCB. So it's and the idea is that you've got like a permanent alternate power supply for your Pi, basically. Perfect yeah. for any kind of data loggers or... People get in live and watch it blip up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Show it. Prove that it works. It's there with the light bulb already. It's got a battery already. already. <laughs> Right, I give up. No <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready? No, oh, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. My spatial awareness is so poor. There we uh, go. Cool. And it's on. Um, there's a little battery warning LED on there. So if it drops below, I think it's 3.2 volts, uh, 3.4 volts, it will warn you that the battery is so, uh, going low. 1.5 amps. That should be more than enough to power some motors and wheels. And uh, you can do a fair bit with that. Yeah. And, and Bluetooth and. And the other thing it does is when it when it low battery warms, it also pulls BCM4 high, 
so that you can actually respond to it on the system. Yeah, you can shut down so your party down. cleanly or whatever. So you, you can want use to it do. like a mini U UPS. Yep. Save your SD card. Exactly that. This version doesn't charge, but we are working on a version that also has a charging circuit, so that while the Pi is plugged in, it will keep the battery pack um, topped up. But uh, initially, this one's just a straight battery power supply for the well, Pi. It's just have something out there that's simple, affordable, and does one job. <laughs> yeah, it does and it does well. it really well. <laughs> mm, that's it. Mm. It's a really nice thing. It's super yeah. tiny. Very excited about that. Are the live house on the store yet? No, but they will be soon. We're just working all the labels and stuff, aren't we? With well, um, we've been testing them all as well to get the uh, discharge curves and everything so that we've got the information. Uh, okay. So we'll have lots of techie information about LiPo soon. Very exciting. And something else that we um, uh, teased on Insta on Twitter, Twitter yes, yeah. yesterday or the day before is the yeah. automation hat that's coming soon. Um, so this is very exciting. We just got a prototype since today. Mm. So this is going to be kind of semi-industrial, industrial Internet of Things drive things that take 12 and 24 volts type affair. Yes. Three much. relays, yep. ADC input at 24 volts, IOs at 24 volts, lots of indicator lights, lots of warning lights, and it's just going to be amazing. There's a lot to play with on there. A lot yeah. to play with. There is. Can you also input from 5 volt sensors onto that? Yeah, absolutely. They're yeah. just tolerant of 24 volts. So basically... You should be able to hook up most things you would want to yeah. hook up, apart from like main like power supply. automatic door on your garage and that sort exactly of thing. Exactly that. Solenoids yeah. for locks. Um, heating systems often have like a, a logic line that you can trigger yeah. to turn on and off and that kind of and thing. Can you imagine how messy that would be on a breadboard? Oh yeah, there's a lot on here actually. It's uh, it, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's uh, yeah, really nice hat and LED indicators on every channel because we love them blinking lights. Mm -hmm. So you can at a glance you can see what inputs and outputs are active and. Um, whether your relay is currently on or off, and what how bright the ADC channel is for the uh, proportional to the voltage that's coming mm -hmm. in, that kind of thing. Yeah. And there's little indicators and a couple of extra indicators in the corner just to say, yeah, I'm powered. Yeah, I can see the internet and uh, a warning light that you can use for your own purposes. Yeah. So if a sensor trip, trip not something. mains powered because really mains powered on a hat is not the best idea. No, this is <laughs> you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. Because it needs lots of isolation and things so that you don't end up with lots of bright lights and headaches and death. <laughs> yeah. 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 Magic smoke. Show the back as well, John. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, th this is quite nice, actually, because it's self-documenting as well. So on the back, all the BCM pin numbers are listed against the functions, mm -hmm. um, which should just make it really easy to prototype with. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And it's screw terminals all the way around, come fully assembled. It's going to be yellow screw terminals, do we think? We just don't even know. We just don't even know. We're working on what that. we can get. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's going to be black PCB. It's going to be a good product. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything we've got time for today. Brilliant. Long show. Yeah. Actually, not too bad. Yeah. It felt like a lot of stuff to cover there, and we didn't even look at it in depth yet. We did not. Just show you possibilities. Um, but yeah, thanks, folks. Don't uh, forget to... Like. Comment. Subscribe. Nailed it. Yeah, we'll bring him back. like. See you later. Yeah.